So, Death Must Die is a new action roguelike survivor type game. And what we're going to do in this video is go through the ultimate beginner guide. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks to help you understand the game better. Because there's a lot to this game. There's a lot of depth. It's still in early access. It's available on Steam. My first and probably biggest tip is when you get into the game, you'll see a list of commands on the screen. What I always do is press Q. I always have auto attack. Some players are going to like playing without auto attack. Because what you do is, if you've got that switched off is you just aim at the enemies and click. And that's going to do the attacking. But with auto attack, it gives me one less thing to focus on. So I can put my focus elsewhere, like grabbing XP gems and like making sure that I'm focusing on the right enemies and things like that. The only downside to toggling auto attack and having it on is that your character is always going to move slower. If I turn it off, you'll see how fast I walk, but then I turn it on and you slow down because you're attacking. So it's probably good to find a balance, but I normally have auto attack on so that I have one less thing to focus on. And your very first run in this game is not going to be too great because you've got nothing. Like you literally just have your base attack. You're going to be introduced to loads of different mechanics as you start like making progress in the game. You're going to unlock more things like gear pieces. You're going to get perks for your characters. And as you make more progress in the game, you will unlock extra characters to use. So if we have a look at my campfire, I have Averon, so I've got the knight. I have the barbarian. I've got the sorceress and I've got the assassin. I have one more character as far as I'm aware to unlock. So your first run's not going to be amazing, but you will get new playable characters so that you can try different things. Because like the sorceress has a ranged attack over having a sword that swipes just like right in front of you. So there's range, there's melee. It all depends on the character you're using. And my next tip is to always roam around. Never stand in the same area. I mean, unless you're looking for HP and you're looking for XP gems, don't like spend too long in the same area because if you look at the top right of the screen, you look at the mini map, you're going to see this yellow marker. There's a little yellow circle and if we head over to it, these are like shrines and you get chests and stuff. So there was nothing in that one, unfortunately. But if you're standing in the same place all the time, you're going to miss out on extra loot. You're going to miss out on buffs and stuff because some of these can give you 100% damage. You can get extra movement speeds. They are on timers. They have a duration. But it's always good to roam around and find them because you never know what you're actually going to find. And as well as the shrines and stuff, you can find characters that are going to reward you with different buffs. You get an XP magnet, so it pulls all of the XP gems on the screen towards you. And as I said, you get gear chests and stuff, which is going to help you become stronger for future runs. And then this game is about surviving as long as you can. There's a timer at the top of the screen to tell you how long you've survived. And what I recommend is that you always focus on improving your best abilities as you level up. Collecting the green gems that drop from enemies and stuff will give you XP. And when you level up, you'll be offered different abilities. And there are levels for these abilities that make you stronger. So for an example here, we have Merciful Strike, and it says your attacks become stronger and apply weakened, so I get 11% extra damage. Then if you hold Alt, it's going to tell you what that status does. So weakened affected deals minus 30% less total damage. So when you're weakening enemies, they are getting weaker, they can't deal as much damage to you. So that's something that's really good. But you're not just going to get weakened, you're going to get fire, lightning, curse, there's loads of different uh, like elements and statuses in the game. And what happens in Death Must Die is you get the different elements. They get offered by different gods. You'll see a god that pops up as you level up. And more are introduced to you the more you play. So as I said, you get fire, lightning, curse. They come from different gods. And I recommend making your current ability stronger rather than taking loads of new abilities that are all weak. Because the longer you're in a run, the stronger the enemies get in both their attack and their defense. So if you've got, say, five different weapons and they're all dealing two damage, whereas you've got one and it's dealing 20 you're going to be like way stronger as a character your runs are going to last longer if you're using that leveled up ability over having loads of different ones that have really really weak damage and when you get far enough in a run you're going to come across bosses and taking these down are really beneficial to your runs but don't expect to take them down the very first time you come across them they are really powerful their moves are relatively easy to learn or at least learn how to dodge them and they're usually going to give you good gear drops and xp and that is really really important to practice as much as you can by doing run after run paying attention to their attack and in this game in general but especially against the bosses dodging or dashing is your best friend in this game and not only that you can get upgrades for it so don't neglect it as it'll often be the difference between life and death 
And XP is obviously going to help you level up, but gear in this game is even more important because it's carried through to future runs. If we have a look here, you can see that I've got like headgear, I've got a chest, I've got boots, there's rings, there's weapons and stuff. And you're going to find different rarities. I managed to get a purple and a blue drop off the latest bosses that I killed. And some of these items might give you extra life, they might give you armor, some will give you a better chance of getting blue rewards or even purple. Like when you're leveling up, they'll give you a better chance of getting blues and purples. But if we have a look for an example, you'll see here that this is a knife, it's a rare, this is assassin only, so I can't equip it on my knight. And then you've got tier 1, this is light, so it can't be equipped on a knight because he carries heavy gear. And then for an example, if you look at my chest piece, it's tier 1, it's heavy. That can't be equipped on like the sorceress, the assassin, because they are light characters. So it limits which characters can use the gear, but if you find something better, also, don't always equip it straight away. Because once it's equipped, it is bound to that character. You'll see at the bottom of the description for the chest is bound to Averon. So no other character can use it in the game. And when it comes to finding something new, if you hover over it and you hold shift. So if I try and find something like here, if I hold shift, it's going to compare. And if you have a look at the bottom of that box, it says stat changes if equipped. I'm going to lose two evasion. I'll get three reroll dice. I'll lose three banish dice and I'll get three alteration dice. So it's going to tell you the losses, the gains that you're going to get from equipping a new piece of gear. So always compare to see what's going to be better for you and your character build. And when you get further into the game and you've got multiple characters, you're going to get access to achievements, which are going to award your characters with perks. Like here, for an example, with Averon, if, I, like if you kill 500 skeletons with that character, you're going to unlock the sign of the hero. Then if you come over to your campfire... You can hover over them. All of the perks of the characters are going to be here. So with the sign of the hero, you gain a plus 17% attack damage every three levels up to a max of it's going to be level 30 for 170% extra attack damage. But if we go to the other side of this hub, you are going to have a stash chest. So you can put things in there that you may want to keep. And then you're also going to eventually unlock a shop, which is where you can buy and sell stuff. So for an example, say I didn't want this belt, I can then click in my like scroll wheel, my middle mouse button, and I can sell that item. And then if we look over here, you can buy new items. So there's a headpiece there, it's heavy, so I can put it on my knight, and it's got 10% more expert offers. So this is where you're going to spend all of the gold that you find. You can find it by finding the greedy gold tree thing. I think it's like an obelisk. It's going to give you some for being greedy. You can destroy the vases in the game and you can kill some of the enemies and they're going to drop gold. Make sure you go near it, like walk over it so that you actually pick it up. And some of the gear in the shop can be really helpful. Like this helmet would probably help in some way or another. But if you have a look at the top left, it's going to cost 639 gold coins. So things can be really, really expensive. You'll see if you look at the bottom right, I've got 917 gold. So make sure you are saving your gold. Don't spend it all like the moment you get it. Wait until you find something that's actually going to make a big difference in your game. But also, when you are in a run, look out for the enemies that have a crown above their heads because they are going to drop loot. And as I said, there are multiple characters you can play as in this game, and I recommend trying your hand out with all the different characters that are available, and focus on making your favourite one more powerful with the gear drops that you get, as you're going to have a much better time and you'll make a lot better progress in the game. Pay attention to the abilities that you're unlocking and upgrading during runs, you're going to get much further as you do more runs because of experience and progression with your characters, so if you keep dying at first, even after only a few minutes in the run, don't get disheartened in this game, the game is designed for you to die over and over again there's actually a perk that unlocks when you die nine times with the knight you're going to make progression and get better in this game naturally the more you play because you keep unlocking new things to make future runs easier and if you are stuck with any of the stats you can press b to open up your inventory and your character screen and if you hover over any of the stats so if we look at life if your life points go to zero the hourglass sends you back in time then if we have a look at cooldown, the cooldown of each dash charge, if you hover over any of these, it's going to tell you exactly what the stats do. It gives you a brief explanation. And then if we have a look at something like, where is it? Where's luck? Here, so luck in this game is a multiplier for chance-based god blessings, item spells, or objects. Luck does not increase your chances of getting rarer items. So luck works a little bit different in this game. So when it comes to putting on new pieces of gear, make sure that you know exactly what you're doing when it comes to the stats. 
like here with summon damage damage increase for your summons it's in addition to your spell damage and your spell damage it increases for your god blessings dashes summons item spells and other non-attack abilities so anything you can find in your run that does not require you having like a direct attack so anything that is a spell is going to get buffed damage if you increase that stat so there's different character types, there's different things you can do in the runs, there's always going to be randomised shrines and stuff you can find, and each of the characters has their own sort of abilities and weapons and stuff that you can use. But that is going to do it for the beginner guide for Death Must Die. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helped you out. And on that note, we are going to leave the video there. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like is appreciated. If you wish to support me further as a creator, there are links in the description. Let me know your thoughts about the video in the comments. And if you want to watch more, you can click the video on screen. All support on the channel is greatly appreciated and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.